All right, guys, Casper and Dennis here for Submission Radio. We're standing in the brand new location of MMA Fight Store on behalf of everything MMA. We're standing here with Aussie UFC legend, none other than Kyle Noak. Kyle, the pleasure to be chatting to you. First question, obviously, you had a bit of an injury. You know, you were meant to fight Sexy Armor. Tell us, what, what happened? How come you didn't fight him, and how's the injury now? Um, you know, it was, it was a training accident. Um, we we're getting ready for the fight. I threw a light kick at one of my buddies, and it was against the wall. So uh, I didn't think he was going to kick me back, and I, and I turned to walk away. He still had my leg, and when I turned to walk away, I was facing away from him, and he just kicked my planted leg, and my knee just buckled under the pressure and tore my MCL and tore my uh, patella tendon, so my kneecap was off to the side. Ouch. So uh, obviously straight away I knew because my knee was facing one way, my foot was the other. Uh, I had to click my leg back in, and straight away I knew I wasn't fighting, I was out. So uh, you know what, it, it's feeling good now. It's two months since I've had my surgery. Um, the doctor said I'm ahead of everyone else where they would be, so... Um, Said another month or so, and he'll clean me to start training and uh, hopefully look for a fight after that. Now, Kyle, Akiyama had a pretty impressive performance. I'm not sure if you watched it or not. I'm just wondering, when returning back to the Octagon, is he still somebody who you want to fight? And give us, a, give us your thoughts on his performance. Um, to be honest, I never saw the performance. I never saw his fight, but um, I had trained with Akiyama a lot before. Mm -hmm. uh, when he came to Albuquerque and trained at Jackson's, I was one of his main uh, training partners, so I, I know his game. Um, it was a fight I was looking forward to, you know, I knew I could have win that fight. Um, but uh, he's definitely someone I'd love to fight. He's, he's well known in Japan, he's well respected, so um, he'd be a great opponent for me. Uh, if we get to fight down the line, I hope so. But, you know, the UFC, you never know. Um, so I still like to fight him. Now, Kyle, what people may not know, obviously, you are Steve Irwin's bodyguard, but you also train him in between filming and shooting. You train him with boxing, BJJ, wrestling. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what that was like? How was Steve? Any crazy <laughs> stories? Uh, he was phenomenal. He loved the sport so much. Um, you know, the, basically, I got the job of being his personal uh, security just because he wanted someone to train with. So, uh, you know, there, there's a couple of times he, he was a wild man. He's exactly like he was on TV. But I remember one time we were sparring, he's like, you know what, I think that if I just come at you like a brawl, I think I'd win. <laughs> he's like, I'm not feeling this technique. I'm like, all right. He's like, so I'm going to come at you 100%. I'm like, okay, fine. So he come at me, he comes swinging and swinging, and I, I just sort of dodge and went, and then I hit him down the middle, and he dropped to one knee, and he'd be like, all right, let me do that again. And he'd come again, and he'd swing and swing, and then same thing. And after a while, he's like, okay, let's go back to technique. That, that works a lot better. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, he loved it. We used to do MMA sparring every Wednesday morning. Tuesday night, he couldn't sleep a wink. He'd, he'd be in the gym 2 o'clock in the morning. We used to try to train at 7. He'd be in there 2 o'clock in the morning with his hands wrapped, shadow boxing, waiting for us to get there. Wow. And uh, I remember one time we had the little gloves on and he hit me right down the middle and split me all the way down here. <laughs> and the look of excitement on his face, it was, it was like, it, he just loved it, you know, and... Uh, so he took me up to the vet. The vet stitched me up. Went back to training and just kept on going. <laughs> yeah, he had a vet on site, so we just got the vet to do it. Uh, yeah, he was crazy. I, I, I really missed my time there at the zoo. He was, he was a great friend and, and a great person. Wow, the vet needs a job at the UFC, I think, with their stitching up <laughs> skills. And now, uh, Carl, you, you train at uh, Jackson's Winkle John's, which is one of the greatest camps. You know, Mike Winkle John, he's on our show frequently, always talking about how great you guys are. Recently, Travis Brown moved camps. He went over to the Glendale Fight Club. I'm just wondering, um, what was your reaction when you found out Travis was leaving? You know, obviously, we stalk your Twitter quite regularly, so we know you guys are close always. friends. So... Uh, <laughs> Tell us, what, what was your reaction when we found out your great mate Travis uh, decided to go to a different camp for a bit? Um, you know, because he went to a new camp, we're no longer friends. I hate him. Um, <laughs> That's um, going to be the, the title on Bloody Elbow tomorrow, I'm afraid, Carl. I'm sorry. <laughs> Travis, if you're listening, I don't mean that. He's too big for me. Um, you know, it was Travis' decision. Uh, you know, he just wasn't feeling. He said he wanted to try something new. Uh, he spoke to Greg Jackson and Mr. Winkler John about it. They were both cool. You know, they said, yep, go do your thing. Uh, you have to do what's best for you. So, uh, He's just trying it out, see what it's like for this new f camp. So, um, you know, if, if that's what fits for him, that's what fits for him. You know, um, he's a great fighter, and I'm sure that he'll do great no matter where he goes. Um, obviously, we're still friends. I still talk to him all the time. Um, I still tease him all the time, and hopefully he doesn't <laughs> catch me. I'm still a little bit faster than him, so I hope he never catches me. But, uh, you know, he's a great friend of mine, and I respect his decision no matter where he goes. Now, Carl, October 8th, clearly we stalk your uh, Twitter regularly. October 8th, you tweeted, you probably don't even remember this, yeah. you tweeted you were doing some light sparring. If you can just give us a bit of an update, you know, with, with the knee, tell us a little bit more about that. Um, yeah, obviously, I, I, I'm not supposed to be doing any sparring still yet, but... Um, it's on the low down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I felt all right. I felt okay. Um, I just started doing light sparring with the guys at the gym. Um, yeah, they... Uh, 
obviously they, they charge me. I can't move backwards. I can't really chase them down. So it's kind of like just stand there and brawl. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, I'm one of them guys that's always in the gym. I'm always training. I can't have time off. So uh, for me, it's been a nightmare to be out for two months without sparring, without doing anything. So for me to get in there and just even just brawl, it, it's it just made me feel alive again. And, and mm. uh, you know, I, I can't help it. That's what I love doing. And, you know, speaking of injuries in the gym, I think one of your teammates, Alistair Overeem, who, you know, he's been on our show a few times. He's a great guy. He's got a bit of a bad rep, obviously, of what happened between him and John Jones. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, you know, obviously you train with the guy, so you know him better than all the media out there have written some negative things about him. What's it like training with Alistair? Is he as rough in the gym as people say that he is? And I'm talking about MMA sparring <laughs> and nothing else. Um, no, he's not. You know, uh, Alistair's actually a really good teammate, and, and the whole time he's there, not one of us had anything bad to say about him. Um, it was a free accident in the gym um yeah, it just happens that alice is a lot heavier than john so um you know that's how the injury happened but uh he was a great teammate he was always down to go to team events um actually when i hurt my knee he called me almost every day asking if i needed anything um if i just wanted to hang out play video games anything like that you know so um he was he was a he was a great teammate and i have nothing bad to say about him and i'm sure most of the people in the gym don't have anything bad to say about him what kind of video games do you play with alistair over him uh he loves fifa i don't know uh, I like this guy with games. his fifa uh, how I, euro I put I, afl live on see if you can uh, figure that thing I, out i can't play afl either but uh, <laughs> a rugby league game or a rugby union game i can play uh we played FIFA, and then I tried to ch challenge him at Tekken. Oh, uh, yeah, a couple of other games. Button Bash of Paradise. He, he wouldn't play, though. Uh, FIFA's his He's team. ducking you in Tekken. I know. I'm oh a Tekken, I'm a Tekken <laughs> master. If anyone's out there wants to play me in Tekken, I am actually the Tekken king. You're going to get some weird guys messaging you, like Conebone69, going, oh, hey, <laughs> hey, Carl, I heard you want to play Tekken sometime. Come over to my house, I'll challenge you. I'm, and not, I'm not stripping right now, so it's actually hot. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting hot over this crazy. Tekken thing. <laughs> and just curious, who do you play in Tekken? Are you an Eddie Gordo guy, King? No, no I'm none of them guys. I'm uh, I like uh, Hiachi Mishima. Yeah, yeah. I like all the Mishimas, and I like uh, Paul Phoenix. Very nice. Yeah. Now, Kyle, obviously you were on the Ultimate Fighter, uh, Chuck Liddell vs. Tito Ortiz, Season 11, and you obviously did uh, Canada vs. Australia. Oh. A lot of guys coming out of that season, Aussie guys. Who are some of the guys that you think you know might make it big in the UFC? And just some of them might have caught your eye. Uh, you know, the one that stands out the most to me is Jake Matthews. Mm. Um, you know, I've obviously developed a close relationship with him after the, after the show. Uh, he's been to Jackson's and trained where Greg and Mr. Winkle, John, the whole team, loved him and thought he's got the world in front of him if he wants to dedicate himself, which he has, you know. Um, the whole time he was in Jackson's after the show, he, he got so much better. If he went on the show in the same way he finished when he left Jackson's, he would have won the show without a doubt, in my mm -hmm. opinion. And I actually went and watched him train last night. Um, and he's just, he's a phenomenal kid who just picks things up so quick. And I think uh, if he keeps out, he's only 19. Mm -hmm. So if he keeps training, I think he's definitely going to be a, a, world, a world champion. We're very excited for Jake Matthews. Now, Carl, when we let people know that we were going to interview, they sent in some fan questions. So I've got a couple to ask you. Mm -hmm. First question comes from a guy called Unique Steez. He'd like to know, what's your favorite submission? That's his name, Unique? Well, this is his uh, internet alias. <laughs> so there might be a guy somewhere in a basement or it could be, you know, could be Tony Abbott for all we know, but what what is your favourite submission? Uh, my favourite one's triangle choke. Um, you know, I've got long legs, so it works well for me. Uh, yeah, I think that's definitely my favourite submission. Awesome. Now uh, we've got another question from Aussie zero eight four. Very original. Um, he wanted to know. He wanted to know another question about Steve Earl. He wanted to know, did you ever catch any crocs with Steve? And obviously, in terms of the bodyguard thing, you know, did you have any crazy stories? People mobbing Steve Earl where you had to, you know, slip on a triangle or anything like that? Um, no, no crazy stories of fans mobbing him. Um, you know, he, he was a big guy, could handle himself, mm -hmm. so it wasn't really that. Um, Crocodile, yes, we used to go up there for uh, over a month at a time and camp up far, far north Queensland and do crocodile research where we catch the crocodiles and put satellite trackers on them and stuff like that. Wow. To find out how far they dove and stuff like that. And because we had such a great relationship with Steve, uh, he used to make us jump on the head and we were like <laughs> the main guys to, to, to get the crocodiles. Um, you know, so he, he, it, was, it was a great experience and one I'll never forget, you know. Um, he, he taught me how to surf. Uh, I remember one time we were out surfing and uh, he sees a big school of uh, birds, I don't know if that's what you call a group of birds. Mm. Uh, there, there's a big bird circling around, so he pales on his board all the way over to where they're circling, sticks his head in the water and has a look around. Then he sticks his head back up and he's like, hey, come over here and have a look. I'm like, what is it? And he sticks his head on and looks again and he goes, there's a big shark under there chasing all this full of fish. I was like, all right, see you later. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, 
the things I've done with him, like catching crocodiles, going out in his boat, catching all types of animals. He taught me so much about wildlife and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I, I, got, I learned a lot from him when I was with him. I think I learned more from him than he did from me from uh, MMA. Wow. Wow. And a great, great guy. Now, we do a little thing on the show. It's called the Submission Radio Tap Out Round. Okay. It is uh, one of the sexy, officially been voted one of the sexiest MMA segments in the world. GQ Magazine listed in the top 1,000 MMA seg segments that are out there. We're at 999, so we're working our way up. And uh, we've, got, we've got some questions to throw at you. So are you ready, Carl Noak, for the submission radio tap-out round? And before you jump on it, let me, let me tell you, Diego Sanchez, uh -huh. he was in the same position as you a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And he had a bit of a tough time sometimes. Diego, we appreciate it, but he had a little bit of a tough time. So just keep that in mind, okay? All right, here we go. Now, uh, Carl, the Submission Radio Marketing Department thought that you have a great nickname, but we got them down to come up with three alternative nicknames for you to choose from. So I'm going to list three nicknames for you, and I want you to choose your favorite one, okay? okay. Now, the first one is the Dubbo Assassin, okay? You can okay. see that one. Maybe have uh, that uh, Bellator, Stephen Bonner, Justin McCulley mask thing happening, you know? Okay. It, it would work when you came out. The second one is... Carl Bloke Noak. Now think about it. Mike Goldberg goes, Bloke Noak is coming right up. Yeah, you know, it, it just has a lot of sellability. Now don't, don't knock these ideas before you hear each one. Okay. And the next one is the New South Wales Smasher. Now before you deny this one, New South Wales actually stands for Noble Super Warrior. So which one do you choose? Wow. Um, I think I'm definitely going to have to go with the New South Wales Smasher. Okay. Just because you explain what the NSW meant, so I'm going for that one. We will copyright it after this interview, <laughs> so you can't use it. No, but but it, it, someone's got to make a pay. No, it's okay. We'll, we'll let you use it if you want to. All right. Now, you've already got your new nickname, Carl. Obviously, as a big celebrity, you understand how important it is. You know, the limousine ride at the red carpet events, you know, you've got to have a fresh look. So we flew in a guy from Milano, fashion advisor, and he's got... I think about five new looks for you. You're going to choose okay. which one is your favorite, all right? All right. All right so, Dennis is going to show us the looks. Oh, you're going to show Carl first. All right, so there's Carl Bloke Noak. Nice. You show, show the camera again. All right, so he's got a mullet and a, and a big old dad mustache. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably, that, we didn't Photoshop that, that was just the real photo we yeah, found. <laughs> now, summer festivals are coming up, and uh, Carl, you know, we figured he likes Stereosonic, so we got uh, Future Music First, or Stereosonic, Carl Noak. Kanye glasses and all. Next up. Now, the UFC doesn't like pirates, but we thought, you know what? What if the pirate was Carl Noak all along? Now, what's more relaxing than coming down to the octagon? In a sexy robe, drinking some tea. Like that. Coach Wink and Greg Jackson will be like, Carl, you're up in five minutes. You're like, relax, I'm drinking my oolong tea. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now, obviously, you come from... There's a woman. Now, you live in Albuquerque, correct? Uh -huh. Yes, I do. Okay, now, what's Albuquerque famous for? Uh, green chili. Wrong. Breaking Bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Heisen Kyle or Heisen Noak, whichever one you prefer. All right, so out of those, which one's your favorite? I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the double one, the mullet, like the, kid, the photo of me when I was younger, basically. <laughs> <laughs> the real photo out of all of them. Awesome, awesome. Hard like Noak. Logan Australian look, I like that one. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the tap hour right now. We want a well-to-wait prediction from you, Kyle. Hendricks versus Lawler, who wins and how? Um, I like Lawler. I'm, I'm going to go with Lawler. Um, how does he win? I think he's going to win by decision. Uh, um, you got to give us something more exciting than that. He's going to win by knockout, TKO in the fourth, I think. Excellent. Quote that. There you go. Now, uh, obviously, we mentioned you were on the Ultimate Fighter. What would you say the biggest thing is that you learned from your time on Team Liddell? Um, <laughs> uh, the biggest thing I learned, I, I can't say, because it'll probably put Chuck in trouble. Um, oh, really? He's, he's a good <laughs> guy. No, he's, he's a good guy, and he loves the party, and that was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing I learned. If you, uh, if you don't say, people are going to make their own assumptions. Did he oh, that's, throw? I'm fine with that because then I'm still out of the trouble. Did he uh, throw his phone often at people? No, he never. You know what? Chuck was a great guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he was always on his phone, but he, he, he was a great guy. Um, the best thing I probably learned was from uh, John Howard. He taught me uh, the boxing coach that was on the show, and he taught me uh, some good little slip moves and stuff like that. 
Um, yeah, that's the battle's all zone. I'm, like, right. I'm not going right. to try We'll talk to after the interview. <laughs> now, Kyle, uh, we've got another little game for you. It is called How Well Do You Know Your Teammates? Roll the music. Okay, so this is going to be a truth or false round. We're going to ask you some questions about your Jackson Winklejohn brethren, and we want you to answer them to the best of your ability. Okay. This will be recorded, and they will probably see it. So please, do your best. <laughs> Okay? All right. All right, here we go. First question. John Jones dislikes signing UFC replica belts. True or false? I'm going to say... Oh, it's a tough one. It is a tough one. John's a tough guy. I don't know. I'm going to say... True. You got it. We don't, we, don't have any, we don't have any bingo music, but yeah, that, that's correct. <laughs> Or at least he used to. I'm not sure about now, but he used to not enjoy signing replica belts because they weren't the real belt and uh, people didn't earn them yeah. like he did. I mean, they do cost $300, so you'd think that, you know, if you pay 300 bucks for a replica belt, you might have earned it, but okay, yeah, we'll take it. Next hey, well, question. If I get the belt, I'm signing every single belt out there. Excellent. If I won the belt, I'd sign everything. If I wore a belt, I'd sign belts. <laughs> now, our next question, true or false? Apart from his current nickname, the natural born killer, Carlos Kunda was once known as the Albuquerque Bandit. Wow, Carlos does love Albuquerque. Wow. Is he a bandit though? I don't think. No, I'm gonna say false because he's not. He's you know. He's, I think his dad's a politician. And I don't. I don't think. It's true. It's true. It's true. Ah, uh, the disappointment that Carlos will feel when he sees this interview. Sorry, Carlos. Okay, now next question. Don't peek over here. I see he's peeking. No, he's peeking. You lose points read. for that. Diego Sanchez once sang an exceptional version of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody during a karaoke trip. Now. Onlookers, onlookers clapped on at the impressive performance. <laughs> False. I'd say they clapped. If they clapped on, it was probably to get him off. But I don't think they clapped on an impressive performance. Carl, first you said true, then you said false. Yeah. There's no money riding on this. <laughs> Which one are you going with? I'm going with. You know what, D? I'm going with true because Diego, everything he does, he does it well, and he puts his whole heart into it. So I'm not going to sit here and say that he didn't sing it well. Um, Diego's a good friend of mine, so I'm going to say true. Although Diego will appreciate it, it's actually false. Oh, well, I'm, I, I still win with you. You lose your house, Carl. <laughs> no, I'm going to with Diego. I got you, Diego, don't worry. <laughs> All right, another one. True or false? This should be an easy one. I don't want to say you're up for anything. True or false? Coach Wink has earned three world titles. True. Correct. True. Right. There's no jokes uh, there. Uh, Nothing but respect for Coach Wink. He's uh, one of the he's best trainers out there. And, and one of the guys that everybody in the gym looks up to. Even Greg, you know, he's... Uh, He's like a father figure to everyone in the gym and, and uh, great guy, great guy. Okay, now, Kyle. Mm -hmm. Alistair Overeem once went streaking through a snowy field with his mates in the Netherlands. True or false? And I want you to think about this. This man invites you over to his house for video games and doesn't want to verse you in Tekken, so really think about this one for us. Can I have some thinking music? We'll edit some thinking music into it, no worries. Uh, I'm going to go with, I don't know what to go with here, in the snow? In the snow. Streaking in the snow? That's the only way he'd do it. That's the only way he would do it? I I'm going to say true then, I'm going to say true then. I, I'm sorry ladies, it's false. <laughs> but then again, we don't have the we don't have proof to say it never happened. So you know what? We'll give Carl that one true. I'm sure he did at some point. Text him later on and tell him to tell everyone that he did it. Yeah, I can make that true. Carl Noakes making headlines now. Um, now, true or false? During his college days, John Jones had a pet snake in his room called Shoelace. False. Boom. Got it. And now, finally, and this is the last one. How how well do you know Tim Kennedy? I know Tim pretty well. You know, he was in the army once. Yeah, still is. Wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> I failed the challenge. Okay, here, here's the question. Did I got it right? All right. Here's the, no, yeah, I'm not going to let you off that easily. Tim Kennedy is renowned for his salmon dishes. True or false? And this is the final question of the round, so you want to finish this out strong. No, I don't want to say anything bad about Tim because he's a bad guy. Of course. I mean, in a good way, he'll hurt me. He's a bad, good guy. Yeah. Um, MacGyver of MMA. Many say. Just so he doesn't hurt me when he sees me next time, I'm going to say Tim's a phenomenal chef. And no matter what he cooks, he cooks it well. So I'm going to say, if, he's, if, if Tim wants to cook salmon, I'm going to say he does it perfect. That's a really sneaky way to get in there. But you know what? 
I think technically it's correct because it's true Tim Kennedy is renowned for his salmon dishes. Ring the bells. Carl Noke, you made it through Submission Radio's tap out round. How do you feel? I feel like I just won a world title. Well, I think this is a lot greater than that, Kyle, but we'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> Guys, don't forget, you can follow, uh, you can follow Kyle on Twitter at Kyle Noke. Uh, he will be making a lot of headlines this coming week. Kyle, thank you so much for chatting with us. No problem at all. Thanks for having me on.